Hi, Carl Swope with the Swope family of dealerships in beautiful central Kentucky. And I hope you enjoy this series we call Driving in Cars with Carl. Each time we'll drive interesting cars, some of them brand new, some of them really old, but we'll also have special guests that are doing fascinating things in central Kentucky to make this the special place it is. Along the way, we hope you learn something about where we live, work, and play. Let's go for a drive. I am really excited about today's Driving in Cars with Carl. First off, I'm driving Toyota's 2019 Avalon. Toyota has redesigned the Avalon completely. It's their fifth generation Avalon, and without a doubt, it's the most luxurious car Toyota's ever built. And whether you've lived here for a lifetime or you're a visitor to Central Kentucky, today's guest should be very interesting as well. She's Jana Clark, and she is the Sports Marketing Director for the Elizabethtown Sports Park. The Elizabethtown Sports Park is the premier sports complex in really the eastern United States, and it's brought so many visitors to Central Kentucky over the last five years. Hey, Jana. Hey. It's kind of cold out there. Hop in my Avalon. The uh, seats are warm, and we'll go out to the sports park. Sounds like a great idea. This is a soccer mom's dream. <laughs> Uh, I think so. It's got plenty of room for soccer kids, plenty of room in the trunk for soccer balls. Love what it. do you think? It's very nice. Yeah, it is. Uh, one of the cool things about the uh, 2019 Avalon is it has Apple CarPlay. So uh, let's see if we can get Siri to take us out to the sports park. Siri's pretty smart. Hey Siri, take us to the Elizabethtown Sports Park. Getting directions to Elizabethtown Sports Park. Let's go. So we're going to start our short drive out to the sports park from exit 94 where so many of our visitors um, uh, stay when they come to, to Elizabethtown to go to the sports park. They do. This area of town is extremely convenient right off of the interstate. So many of our families do stay in this area and we would like to show people how easy it is to get down to the Elizabethtown Sports Park from and here. The, the other thing that I think uh, some of us miss uh, that live here is how much development has occurred out here at Exit 94 since the sports park was built. That's true. We're, we just let the parking lot of one new hotel. In our view right now is another new property that is, um, that is under construction that will be opening next year. New restaurants at this area for sure are convenient. People like to eat close to where they stay. And, you know, we recruit youth athletes to play sports at the sports park, but because they can't drive this beautiful car, um, they bring their families with them. So it becomes yep. a family vacation for so many people that come to Elizabethtown. And it's neat to be able to see that happening as we get further and further into the sports tourism business. So two new hotels have, are already open just this year, and then another one's going to open next year. Yes. And, and this is such an advantage, uh, certainly for our visitors, but also for our local residents. Uh, full service hotels, there's the restaurants, there's there's so much uh, energy and activity out here and development and employment. People say all the time that people like to travel to places that they would like to live and they like for people to come visit them um, in places they like to visit. So it is extremely important for families to be able to host their visitors, for companies to be able to have meetings, holiday parties, it's really fun to have new restaurants if you live here, to have a variety of things to go see and do. Um, so sports tourism really has so many advantages for Elizabethtown. And the Elizabethtown Sports Park is noted for how convenient it is to where the people stay, but also what people do. Because talk a little bit about these uh, these tournaments that we have and, and how the, how the 
the visitors uh, interact with the community. It's interesting because unlike professional sports and college sports, which everyone seems to think about, we specialize in youth travel sports. And a lot of times people come into town, say on a Friday afternoon, and they, um, they have their schedule in front of them. They know when they play their first or maybe their second game. But once they get here, they're looking for things to do in their downtime. So they're looking for nice things like a new movie theater that we have. Yeah. Yes. A new water park that we have in town. Lazy river around the water There's park. There's a lazy river around the water park. Um, and family friendly restaurants, outdoor spaces, Freeman yep. Lake Park, the trails. There's just so many things for people to take advantage of that you don't have to plan ahead of time. You can find easily. You can download the Touri Town app. All that information is there for them. And we encourage everyone to do a little bit of their own research. You don't have to make all of your plans before you get here. You have some options of planning what you're going to do in your downtime. Teams love to hang out together. They like to eat together. Yep. They like to swim together. They ever hang out in car museums? They do hang out in car museums. Do, we, you, ha do you know of any car museums? I think I know of a car museum out? they could hang out in, we which they do. Love we love the we, car museum. And we love to have the teams come and, and see those cars. You it, To have those uh, young kids light up to, uh, when they look at cars like that is, of course, it warms my heart. Well, it's, it's fun to incorporate history. It's a great photo op. Parents love to take pictures with their kids at the car museum, for sure. And so we're driving down Mulberry, which of course our local residents drive down very often, but this is, this is the direct route from exit 94 to the sports park. And of course, we're gonna go through our historic downtown. And you mentioned, you mentioned they like to kind of hang out in the restaurants and so forth between their games. And, and certainly the redevelopment of downtown Elizabethtown has, has been boosted by the, the people that come here and visit uh, because of the sports park. Tell me, tell me a little bit about the history of the sports park. How long have we had it? And, okay. and tell me about uh, some of the tournaments that come each year. So the, sports, the idea of the sports park is about 10 years old now. Um, the restaurant tax was passed as the funding source to pay for the construction of the park. Yep. The city was a partner with tourism at the time and continues to be to this day to operate and be involved in the sports park. We have recruited events that draw youth-oriented teams here. They're ages 8 to 18, and they play all different kinds of sports. They play fast pitch, they play baseball, soccer, lacrosse, football. We even have cross-country courses at the sports park, and the sports park is also available to do things that aren't just sports. So it's called a sports park, I understand that. But there are lots of open spaces. There's an opportunity for concerts, for parties, for camps, for showcases, for all kinds of things that happen. There also happens to be a trail around the sports park that our locals, the locals, our local residents can enjoy, walk their dogs, train. It's open to the public. There's no admission to go enjoy the, the, the trail at the sports park. It really belongs to this community. Yeah. We're downtown. We're this downtown. Is, this is awesome. Let me tell you why downtown's important. So not only are the businesses, the restaurants and the boutique shopping and the barber shops and the coffee shops, but there are so many events that happen in downtown now and we're able to promote those to our visitors. Yes. It's just an added bonus because when a festival happens, it's important to people that live here, but it's also really attractive to people that are visiting us too. Yeah. So our downtown really has it going on right now. So how many people visit Elizabethtown because of the sports park each year? So you'd be surprised, it, over 50,000 athletes a year. My goodness, 50,000 athletes. And youth boys travel with an average of two and a half adults, <laughs> and youth girls travel with an average of three adults. Uh, you know, I'm not real good at math, <laughs> but that's a lot of people it's a lot that of come people. to Elizabethtown. And I know there was a recent uh, study done, and the direct spin of the teams and the athletes and so forth that come to town. Just the direct spend was over $20 million. It is. And those dollars are dollars that are being spent at our, not only our hotels and restaurants, but right. they are filling up gas tanks and they are back to school shopping in the summer and they are having a ball in our community doing whatever those teams need to do in their downtime. In the boutique shops downtown, but also out in the, in the big box stores as well. 
for sure. We hear people all the time say that we have um, amazing shopping in Elizabethtown. People that live in Elizabethtown typically don't promote our shopping, but people that visit here from other communities, we have a reputation for having some good shopping. So we've left the historic district of downtown and we're just a short, what, mile or so from the actual sports park. You know, it amazes me because I talked to some of our local residents who who know we have a sports park. Yes. They know that it's a, a premier sports park, really, in the eastern half of the United States, but they've never been there. So we're going to take probably the route that most visitors take. Sure. But also show our local residents how you get into the sports park. And, and again, as you said, they should come every weekend. It's free. It and, is. And it's a beautiful place to spend some time and watch some kids have a really, really good time. Leagues, leagues happen every evening during the week, Monday through Thursday, our local leagues. And I can tell you that um, our local leagues are made up of um, volunteers in our community. A lot of them have children that are involved in local ap- uh, um, athletic programs locally. I think we'll continue to see even more of that as we transition into a new era of the sports park and new opportunities that are happening there. But Monday through Thursday, our park is filled with uh, residents of Elizabethtown that are involved in youth sports. You know, not only is this probably the best car Toyota has ever built, but one of the things I take a lot of pride in is it's Kentucky built. Oh, this that's car, fabulous. This car is built in Georgetown, Kentucky. And, you know, you mentioned that the sports park has actually been operating the last five years. I just read where Kentucky in the last five years has built over six million cars between Toyota in Georgetown, Ford up in Louisville, and, of course, General Motors down in Bowling Green. Kentucky can be proud of the fact that it's built over six million cars, and it's got an awful lot uh, in this car. And right here in Elizabethtown, just outside of our uh, amazing sports park, uh, are so many suppliers to that industry. You've got uh, the Tulsa that's right across the street, yes. Acubona Break uh, across the street, of course, AGC that makes glass. Um, so much of our local uh, community is involved in the automobile industry and builds wonderful cars like this Toyota Avalon. You know, we are all in the economic development business. We are. Tourism is economic development. These industries are economic development. And it is amazing to see so much of that going on right here in Harper County. When you bring 50,000 visitors, 50,000 athletes, plus their families yes. to Elizabethtown each year, that is certainly economic development. It is. And and the 20 million that I mentioned is direct spend. The, the multiplier effect over that obviously is increased employment. There's employment here directly at the sports park, but yes. there's increased employment in the restaurants, in the hotels, in the in the retail shops that, that our visitors uh, uh, use when they come to town. So Siri has turned us off of our ring road onto West Park Road, which is the main entrance into our sports park. It is. I get very excited when I take in the view that we're getting ready to see because I remember years ago when it was just mounds of dirt and now the incredible view that you get when you pull in and you start to see the lights and the first thing you see are our beautiful diamonds on the diamond side of our park. And you know, again, I, I, I keep mentioning that so many folks I talk to in town have not made this drive and it really is stunning to see the development out here. I don't think we mentioned, but how many, how many diamonds are there here? There are 12. There are 25 fields total. We have 12 that fields. are diamond shaped that we play baseball and softball. Um, you can also play kickball and all kinds of other things on them. Um, and then 12 that are what we call our rectangular, out, um, outdoor rectangular fields that you can do anything that you can do on square grass on those. So, so we have a lot of options out here, but it's soccer, 158 acres. Soccer, football, across, yeah. How soccer, many acres? football, across, 158 acres total. 158 acres. Uh, I, we didn't mention, but the, a $35 million development for sports tourism right here in Elizabethtown. It's incredible when you think about it. Yeah. What, what wasn't here and what is now here. And we hear people all the time that come out here and say, oh my gosh, how did this end up in Elizabethtown, Kentucky? And it ended up out here because we knew it was important to this community to develop this line of tourism and to provide the economic impact for our citizens. Well, it's certainly extraordinary. Here we are. So this is the front gate of the Elizabethtown Sports Park. And as you enter into the park, you start to see the action that happens here. You start to see cars coming and going. 
parking lots everywhere, plenty of parking. We have 1,500 parking spaces, paved parking spaces, with some overflow spaces here at the sports park. So there's plenty of room for everyone. And I noticed the Miracle Field. Tell me about the Miracle Field. The Miracle Field is a special part of this park. It is an ADA accessible small t-ball sized field that is made of a flat playground type surface. It's kind of that rubberized surface with all of the accoutrements of regular baseball fields that are actually into the the surface so you can roll wheelchairs and walkers onto that surface and we have special programming that happens on the Miracle Field. That's wonderful. Do you see that guy in the Mercedes checking out our Avalon? I did. He has Avalon envy. 